Today we're gonna to be comparing these two keyboards. This is the Keychron Q1, and this is the Keychron K8. And they're similar in a few ways, but also very different, and I wanted to go over those differences today. Just a bit of context for you before we start. I am a keyboard fan, I'm a mechanical keyboard fan. I've owned maybe half a dozen over the course of my life and I like them quite a bit, but I'm not an enthusiast to the degree that a lot of people, especially on YouTube, are. So I've never built my own keyboard, I just kind of know enough to be dangerous, and I just like to buy kind of ready-made ones, then customize them a little bit here and there. So this video is gonna be more aimed at people who are casual fans of mechanical keyboards who wanna buy a nice one, um, but it's not gonna be totally in the weeds like some of the keyboard videos. I just don't have the context to do that, and yeah, I think it'll still be helpful anyway. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into what's the same about these keyboards and then the many differences that'll help you make a buying decision. So let's just get the things that are the same out of the way because there's a lot more things that are different. Uh, so the main thing that I think is really great about these keyboards uh, from a Mac user's perspective, primarily a Mac user's perspective, is that they are friendly with Mac OS. So a lot of mechanical keyboards are really built for Windows, Windows only, um, but Keychron basically across all of their keyboards have support for Mac OS. And on both of these, there's a switch you flip between Windows and Mac mode, and it just works great. So if you're on Windows, everything works as you'd expect. If you have it connected to a Mac, you can have everything work there as well. Even things like media keys and like the brightness and everything and like bringing up spotlight, all that works great with the keys here. It just works like you'd expect with a Mac. Both of these keyboards also have backlighting on the keys. So the Q1 is going to have RGB and then the K8 has RGB or just regular like white lights. Uh, you can choose when you're configuring the keyboard which one you like. I have the just plain white ones, but it's like 10 bucks more to get the RGB. And the final difference is that both of these keyboards are hot swappable. If you don't know what hot swappable means, that means that the key switches. So these would be the things we talk about that are like brown, red, blue, like that sort of thing. Those you can just pull off the keyboard and put new ones on if you want to replace them. Uh, if it's not hot swappable, that means you're going to have to solder them. But both of these are hot swappable, which is fantastic. Um, it makes it really easy to swap out switches if you ever want to do that in the future. Okay, so now let's talk about differences because there are quite a few of them and I think these first two are really going to decide for a lot of people which one is right for them. The first difference is the price. The price is significantly different between these two. So neither is what you would call necessarily affordable or really cheap, uh, but in the world of mechanical keyboards, uh, the K8 is actually pretty darn affordable <laughs> compared to what else is out there. Um, it's gonna be $80 to $100, depending on how you configure it. But the Q1 is definitely more expensive. It starts at $150 and you can configure it up to $180. Again, depending on what sort of switches you get, lights, um, there's a whole bunch of configuration options for these, but those are the price ranges, and you probably have already decided that one of these is maybe outside of what you want to spend on a keyboard, but let's keep going. And then the next difference is another huge one, and it has to do with connectivity. So both of these support a wired connection, so they both have a USB-C connector on them. You can just plug it into any computer you want, and things just work. However, only the K8 has a wireless connection option as well. So there's a switch on the side of the K8, you can flip that over to wireless, and now you're doing a Bluetooth connection. You can pair it with up to three different computers, so you can have it paired, switched between them really seamlessly, really easily. It works really well, it has a big battery in it, I think a 4,000 milliamp hour battery that lasts weeks if you don't have the backlight on, I think like a week or so if you do. Um, but if you keep the backlight off, it lasts quite a while and charges up pretty darn quickly, so yeah. If you need a wireless connection, the K8 has it. The Q1 does not. The Q1 only connects over USB-C. So at this point, you've probably already made up your mind. And if you're looking at the K8 and are saying, well, this is cheaper and better, I actually wouldn't disagree with you in many ways. Uh, in terms of just practically using a keyboard in 2022, I think that having a wireless connection is super valuable and the much lower price tag makes it really, really appealing. So I really love the K8. It's actually what I use normally because I have multiple computers I'm using in my life. I have my personal computer and I have my work computer and I'm working from home. So they're at the same desk and being able to just kind of switch which one is connected to on a whim is super, super useful. So. That's a big, big difference. Um, and again, it's the cheaper option. So I think a lot of people will be like, oh, the K8 is the one for me. So let's talk about some of the other differences so, just so you can get a fuller picture of what you're actually getting for that much, much higher price tag in the Q1. So the K8 is a little weird because you can configure it with a plastic frame or a metal frame. I actually have the plastic frame because I wanted to save 10 bucks or whatever. Um, but the K or the Q1 
is super, super heavy. Uh, so this one is about 770 grams, uh, and this one is 1700 grams. So it's more than twice as expensive, and obviously you can't tell in video, but it's really, really chonky. I was really surprised how heavy this is, but that obviously helps when you have it sitting on a desk. It's gonna make it just more solid there, and it's gonna help with the typing sound, which we'll get to in a second. And due to the magic of editing, we are now talking about those key switches. Uh, so you get different key switch options with these keyboards. So the Q1, this guy right here, uh, comes with one option. There's the Gatoron Phantoms, um, Gatoron, yeah, Gatoron Phantom switches. Sorry, I'm reading off my notes because I can't remember all these names off the top of my head. Um, it comes with those. Uh, these are, I think, custom for Keychron. And then the K8 comes with, reading from my notes again, the Gatoron G Pros or the Gatoron Optical version 2s. Now, that may mean something to you, it may not. Um, ultimately, I went with the Gatoron G Pro Browns for the K8, and then this guy, I went with the Phantoms, obviously, because that was the only choice, but I also went with the Browns here. So let's do a quick typing test to show you what each of these sound like on my desk. All right, and then we're gonna lightning round the other things because I think they're all pretty quick. Um, the K8 has adjustable feet, so you can adjust the angle a little bit, whereas the Q1 is just set, it's exactly what it's going to be. The layouts are slightly different. The K8 has an 80% layout, or a 10 key list it's sometimes called layout, and the Q1 has a 75% layout. That just means that there are a few fewer keys on the Q1 because it isn't the full, like full size 100% keyboard. There's a couple more cut off. You can see them side by side here to see what keys are on each. Do a freeze frame and see if the ones that you want are there. And then the Q1 has just a bunch of customization options that are a little more advanced than the K8. The K8 you can customize a bit, uh, but the Q1 is really pitched as something for enthusiasts to customize to their heart's content. So my Q1 is totally stock right now. I haven't done any changes to it, but if I was to make some changes, there's lots of options here. Like I said, you, you can already hot swap the switches in. Um, obviously with any mechanical keyboard, you can just pop off the key caps and put on custom key caps. My K8 uh, already has some custom key caps on it. I'm not using Keychrons on there. And even from Keychron, you can get different customization options with the Q1 that just aren't available with the K8. With the K8, you're going to get the same kind of dark, uh, kind of gray and orange theme uh, that you're going to get from that. And then with the Q1, you have four different options for different case colors and keycap colors. I went with the just white one, uh, but there's blue and green and black. Like there's a couple other options that you can use as a base. And again, you can customize to your heart's content after that. And then you heard the difference in sound in the sound test, and it's not just the switches. Even with the same switches in both of these keyboards, they're going to sound different because the Q1, again, has the much heavier body. It has foam inside that's pre-installed uh, that kind of absorbs some of the uh, clickiness and makes it more thonky, if you will. <laughs> and then uh, there's also a gasket-mounted kind of board. So the board underneath your like fingers will actually flex a little bit as you type, and again, will absorb some of that. So you just definitely get a different sound even from the same switches in each keyboard. And again, there's some stuff like screw and stabilizers for things like the space bar that have different kind of connections than the other keys. And you get a different USB-C cable. I've actually really um, been looking for the sort of like coiled cable for a long time. I like having it. Um, and yeah, it doesn't really matter. Any USB-C cable works, but you do get this kind of nicer one with the Q1. So those are the differences between the K8 and the Q1. Again, they're not an apples to apples comparison necessarily. They're just both from the same company and they happen to be the ones that my eye was drawn to initially. Um, so maybe there are other people out there who are looking at the same comparison or wondering what they wanna get. 
Again, I think the big difference here comes down to price and connectivity. If you need a wireless connection, then obviously the K8 is gonna be a better option for you and at a lower price. So if I had to keep one of these, it would be the K8. That would be easily the one I would choose, but I really like having the Q1 just as a big fan of keyboards. So that's it for me today. Uh, you can find links to both of these in the show notes. Uh, there is no affiliate links or anything on them. I just have these keyboards and wanted to talk about them. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.